So in this video, we're going to be talking about the economic theory of a marketing cooperative. And so here's the setup. Imagine if you would that you're dealing with a marketing cooperative. You're a farmer and you're selling your product to a marketing cooperative. And that cooperative is going to turn around and sell whatever it is you've made to somebody else. Maybe they're going to process it. Maybe they're just a grain co-op that runs a grain elevator. And all they're going to do is hold on to that grain until a later date and time so they can sell it at a higher price because price is always lowest at harvest. So they might want to hold on to it for a couple of months or five or six months and try to get a higher price. And so this is the setup and this is kind of the beginning. It is a marketing cooperative and the goal of the marketing cooperative is to try to market the crop on behalf of the farmer. And so this is the beginning point for any marketing cooperative. There's an old saying you may have heard that saying is the customer is king and there's a related concept, the notion of the doctrine of consumer sovereignty. So what we're going to do, let me say that again, the doctrine of consumer sovereignty. The doctrine of consumer sovereignty basically says that a business should attempt to make the customer happy, that ultimately what the customer wants and needs and is willing to purchase is what it is that a business should focus on. So we're going to approach this from the standpoint of a co-op that's trying to sell something to some eventual customer. So we're going to have a demand curve because of that. So there's always going to be a demand curve, which of course is equal to the average revenue curve and the price for our marketing cooperative, what the cooperative is going to sell to an end consumer, what their selling price is. And if there's a demand curve in a market like this, there's going to be a marginal revenue curve. And there is going to be a cost curve. So here is a cost curve. Now, normally we would call this average total cost, but we're going to call it something different. We're going to call it APC. APC stands for average production cost. Or you might call it the average processing cost. The logic here is that APC is how much it costs to process the good so imagine something really simple, like just a grain elevator that's going to buy corn from a farmer, put the corn in a grain bin, maybe dry the grain, run a grain, you know, run the fan so the, so the grain stays fresh, and they're just going to turn around and sell that to somebody else. So this is a very special type of cost curve. It's not the average total cost curve that we've done in other classes or that you saw in previous uh, videos in this series on the supply or on the economics of cooperatives. This is what it costs to process the product. That ignores the cost of buying the product. In other words, imagine that the co-op didn't have to pay to buy the product. The APC is what it would cost for the co-op to then deliver that product to an eventual consumer, whether they're processing it or not. So the APC, again, this is the average processing cost. This is what it costs the marketing cooperative to deliver that product to some end user down the road ignoring what they paid for the product. And that's going to be important. And there's also going to be an MPC, a marginal processing cost. So the marginal processing cost is the marginal cost or the extra cost of processing one more unit. And again, we're ignoring the price that the co-op pays in order to get this unit of this good. And there's a reason behind that. We'll get to it in just a second. All right, so this gives us some interesting things to kind of consider. The first thing to consider is the good old fashioned golden rule of profit maximization, which happens right here where MR equals MC. This is the point where profit will be maximized and we know this already. So we're gonna draw a dotted line down from that point and we're gonna call that Q, well, we're not gonna call it anything at the moment. And the next thing that we wanna look at are basically two other things. The first one is, Let's get a boundary for how much money the, uh, the co-op could pay the farmer for this item. And so what you'll notice is that um, this APC needs to curve up like this. So at this point right here where the APC crosses the average revenue curve, if we draw a dotted line down here, let's call that Q0 and do the same thing here where APC crosses the average revenue. We're going to call that Q0. At those two points, the cooperative is breaking even. And if the co-op is breaking even, they're breaking even on the cost of processing. Meaning, if the co-op finds itself at these two points, then the co-op can't afford 
to actually buy their product from the farmer or can't afford to pay the farmer anything. So what this does is it gives us a boundary, right? The co-op can't go past Q0 on one side or past Q0 on the other side. The co-op has to stay in between these two points whenever it buys something from a farmer or else it has to give the farmer a negative amount of money. So basically these are boundary conditions. Anything outside of that point, the co-op can't operate. And these three points are important. That middle one that I showed you is where we're gonna maximize profit right here. I'll mark it on the graph. Let's call it Q star, because that's the quantity that maximizes profit. So what we have now is we have a way of seeing where the maximum possible profit is for the co-op. And we have two boundary conditions where we know we can't go beyond that point. If we go beyond those points, the co-op can't afford to buy anything from the farmer or more formally, they can't afford to actually pay the farmer anything. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to draw a graph right below that first one. And I'm going to line up a couple of points on this graph. These are all lined up together. So here we're going to have a quantity. And here we're going to have our price in dollars. And I'm going to carry these dotted lines down. Uh, the two Q naught dots, right? Those are the two I'm going to pull down, the zero, Q naught. And basically that's our boundary, okay? We can't leave that area. And anything in between those two points, we can afford to pay the farmer some positive amount of dollars for whatever it is the farmer is delivering to, to us. And now I'm going to take those two points and use them as a reference point. And I'm going to draw a shape like this. And I'm going to call that the NARP, NARP. And here's the part of NARP I want you to pay attention to. The part I want you to pay attention to is AR. NARP is just a special type of average revenue. It's the net average revenue of processing. Some textbooks call it the net average revenue product. For our purposes, it is nothing more than an average revenue. Let me change colors and see if I can help that make sense. For example, here on the diagram, we have an average revenue curve. And what is the average revenue curve at that point on the diagram? The average revenue curve is the demand curve. So our NARP, our net average revenue product, is an analog to a demand curve. And that's going to be important here in a second. Now, right here at the peak, I didn't draw this perfectly, but let's assume that's the peak. We have another line we're going to draw. We're going to uh, have a line that cuts down through here. And we're going to call that the MARP. Hang on. The NIMRP, all right? Whatever NIMRP, not the NARP, but the NIMRP. The N M R P, the NIMRP. It's hard to pronounce words without vowels. NIMRP is the net marginal revenue of processing or the net marginal revenue product or the net marginal revenue of production, whatever you want P to stand for. And the key thing here is the MR. The NMRP, the NIMRP, is just a special example of the marginal revenue. And that's going to be important. And what I want you to notice is we have a marginal revenue right up here. So what we've basically done is we've drawn an analog to a demand curve and a marginal revenue curve. And here's the logic behind this diagram. The logic here is that in between the two Q zeros, between Q0 and Q0, in this space we can pay a positive amount to the farmer when we buy the product from the farmer so that we can then process it. This means that the height of the NARP curve is the price that you would pay the farmer at any given point. And even though we have a different name, NARP is just a demand curve. And NIMRP is just a marginal revenue curve. So what's going on here is we've constructed a demand curve. Very specifically, this is the marketing cooperative's demand for the product that our farmer that is the patron of the marketing cooperative is going to produce. Now that's probably confusing to you and that's okay because it's kind of a new concept. Hang tight, we'll go over this again in later videos and hopefully clear things up.